on. Uh, next will be presented by uh, Dudi Schneider from Partner Communication. Uh, he will talk about Open VCP in SD1 use case. Very interesting. I had briefly uh, with uh, with Dudi. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is uh, Dudi Schneider. Um, I'm a uh, security network engineer, manager, and partner. Um, I work for part uh, for partner about 11 years, and uh, during this time, I think I saw partner transforming from one company to the other. Uh, everybody knows that partner was Orange at the at the time. Orange was basically um, basically a mobile operator, and now Orange has become changed their brand into partner. So it it, it happened only recently. But uh, it's not only the brand that was uh, transformed, it's not only that, but what else was transformed is basically um, partner Orange has changed from a mobile operator into a big uh, ISP that's a service provider that supports all type of services. And if we divide it into two different uh, domains, basic domains, we have the business domain and we have the residential domain so in the business domain I think partner has today the whole all type of services they have all access services they have hosting LTE as a backup they have uh, ADSL services and of course they have metro services DWDM services and of course we have uh, on top of this we can provide value added services to the customer value added services it means we can provide security services we can provide a uh, basically those services on the on partner uh, premise this is on the business side also we provide integration services on the other side we have the residential uh, uh, services where we provide today a uh, fiber to the home as you know partners started uh, providing fiber to the home services with our legacy uh, service which is uh, based on ADSL uh, services from basic and hot uh, infrastructure. So on top of that, part, part and provide the ISP service and of course security service. And recently, maybe you, I, I hope you heard that we launched our TV solution. So our TV solution is also a very nice solution, okay, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so it's a very nice solution. So partner can provide actually the whole bunch of services for the business and for the residential uh, customers. So, so this is the second transformation that uh, I saw happening in Orange Partner in the past uh, five years. And the last thing that happened, and the last thing in my, in, in the third layer that I see that uh, has changed in Partner is becoming from taking products from uh, vendors and integrating into the system and then building uh, into the network and then building products to the customer based on it. What Partner is doing now, she, uh, we, we started building our services by our own self development and i think and i'm going to introduce you now one of the system that we recently uh, uh, launched it's called vnet this service was self uh, de developed by partner also with cooperation with the cloudify and the, it's a nice use case that can tell you how can we manage our network with an sdn Solution and a V solution, and of course we took some uh, some uh, flavors from SD1, and I'll show you what we did and uh, how it works. Actually, it's already been launched at May. At May, this uh, product. Before I'll talk about the product, I'll tell you, I'll show you what were our challenges, and motivation to do that, and then we're going to talk about the product and what were the challenges to build this product. I think it will be very interesting for you to understand because. You are from the software, you are the software guys, I am the network guy, and I can show you how we got close together during this project, and this is a good example for that. So Vinet um, came to us as an idea, first of all, when we, when we understood that it takes time for us to build a service. If today we, we provide CPE services to the customer, we build them their own MPLS network, their VRS, and then we service chain it into our, to their security service, it takes time. It can take days or more than that. And the customers, of course, 
don't like it that much. They want it immediately. Once they order, purchase the, the service, they want it immediately in. So time to service is the something that we had in mind when we started uh, implementing this uh, uh, product. The other thing is time to market. Time to market, it means that if I have a FortiGate appliance inside my network, and it takes me here to this second topic, which talk about hardware-based appliances. Today we have, let's say we have FortiGate appliance and we can provide only services based on this appliance. It means that I can provide only services that are in FortiGate. This is one thing. The second thing is I can, I, and I am limited to the bandwidth that this appliance can provide you. If I want to add additional services or additional customer to this service, it means that I need to replace the hardware. And if I want different features, if I want Palo Alto features, if I want WAF features, I want DDoS features, I need different appliances to each one. So those two group comes together. If I work in a different way, maybe I can be time to market, better time to market and reduce the time to market to bring new services to the customer. The second group of things, we have different vendor, different uh, product. It means that if I'm an IT manager in a company, and what I want and I want to manage the, my, my CPEs, I have a CPE, Juniper CPE, and Cisco CPE, Drytech CPE, and I have FortiGate, I have Palo Alto, so I need training. I need my guys. If I'm a big company, I have resources, so of course, I'll have those guys, I'll, I'll pay for them. But if I'm a small, medium business, and, they are, and the IT guys, they come and go all the time, and then a new one came, doesn't know how to operate Juniper, and I ask him to, to move the FTP traffic through the LT interface, what happens is it, it, it gets to the CPE, start configuring, file filtering, uh, Juniper is very difficult, and everything goes down. Then all your network is black holes. So, human mistakes. This is something that we had in mind when we came uh, to build this product. Why? Because we understand that if we can build something that will be template-based, he cannot do whatever he wants just what he says, that just what he's uh, capable of, so maybe we can protect and increase the MTBF, the meantime between failure. The last thing that uh, I wanted to focus on today, an IT manager, what they do, they, they uh, provision or they handle each device separately. If we have many branches, so each branch, they need to log into the branch, start configuring it. If they want to configure the, the VAS, the firewall rules, the UTM rules, the DDoS rules, the WAF rules, they need to log into a different machine, different login, different credential. What if they want to see the statistics of the interface? If they have in Haifa uh, two interfaces, they want to see the statistics, how much traffic they uh, forward there. So in this situation, it's very difficult because you need to have a different device, to a different uh, platform to provide you those statistics. So sometimes when you need to do correlation between those systems, if they are separate systems, it's very difficult. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is to build something that will be a centralized and will be able to tell, to give you all those functionalities from one platform. So the first thing that we had in mind when we built VNet VNet is a platform that, can, that you can do all those functions from one place. It means, first of all, the first deployment of the end-to-end -end service. It means the configuration of CPE, the, the service, bring up the service, put, it, put in all the configuration related to the MPLS network, the VRF, and then manage it from, in, from central management system. Then you can have a portal, you can do actions on in this portal you can do operation the uh, operational uh, uh, activities you can do maintenance you can do uh, management you can do uh, uh, other you can see the logs of the firewall everything from a central portal this is the second thing that we had in mind automation it means i'll tell you later how it works and you understand that everything should be automated it means that if i want to instead of waiting a few days in order to bring the service end to end in a few days, it's going to be in five minutes. How? We're going to show you later. And of course, all value-added services are based on NFV. Based on NFV, why? Because if we want to bring new services to the to the uh, to the customers, 
we can do it with NAV. Why? Because the physical infrastructure stays the same and we can change function based on the, on the relevant features that we want. So how it works? First of all, we go to the customer, Chris will go to the customer, ask him how many branches, routers he needs, what the LAN IP, what LAN he wants, the voice, he wants voice services, he wants public IP, he wants private IP, how many infrastructure he wants to each branch. He wants ADSL, he wants a, 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 a metro services, or he wants LTE services for backup. Those, all those uh, information are being inserted into, after being uh, defined, are inserted into our BSS system. Our BSS system, just put it, we put it all and start billing the customer. And why we start billing? Because immediately after we, we put it in the BSC system, we build it in our VNet system. The whole product, all product lists are being transferred into our VNet system and immediately being created in our two layer orchestration the first one is the database, the second one is the orchestration itself. And then in this point, the customer can get the link. In the link, when he press the link, he gets in, log in, put his authentication, and then he can see his network. This is what he sees. He sees his branches. He sees which interfaces is connected in each branches. In each branch, he sees which type, what is the status of each branch. He can see his VRF service, service access list if he, if he wants a connectivity between the branches. He has all those services, UTM services that we, that we mentioned before. This is, this is the NFV part, and then the connectivity to the internet and to the voice. And there you have like summary information regarding how many CPs were installed, how many CPs were added, and all those information you can get from this dashboard. So after the, what happened is in this in this start, in this stage when he sees the when he see he can go and configure the whole inform, the whole information regarding the whole configuration regarding his network topology he can go and cre and start configuring his LAN configuration his one configuration the SD1 how he wants each protocol to go from each site he can configure which UTM the firewall rules the the security rules the antivirus after configuring it, he can configure it while the CPE is doing his way to his, to his first branch. When the first CPE gets into the first branch, he connects, he plugs into the electricity in one side, the other side goes to the internet, authenticated by our system in a secure way, of course. In this point, everything starts. It means that the first deployment is being now activated. All the configuration that is done, go, taking all resources, dynamic resources, putting it into the template, and then being translated into a blueprint. And the blueprint builds the end-to-end -end service. It means he builds the MPLS network VRF. He puts the access list inside it. He, he, he connects between the PNF, between the physical network in infrastructure and the virtual network infrastructure in order to bring the customer to his security services. Once he did it, he goes to the CPE and connects the CPE into the network. All this should be, should be done in a timing, in a way that everybody, if, if you're a network engineer, you know that you need to create the VRF and then put the interface, or you need to create the VRF inside and then put the interface. So everything is done in a timing that uh, no error will be, will be done. After everything being deployed, the customer can see on the dashboard what he did, what he has, what's the status of all his branches, and then do operational things like he can go to each CPU and see the status of the CPU, what's temperature, what's the CPU memory, or he can do operational things. Instead of going to the, to the, to the branch or in, uh, I don't know, RDP to one of the, of the computers and start doing telnet and things like that to test the connectivity, they can do it all from the portal. They just have to choose the CP, the branch, and then which operation uh, tool they want, if it's Telnet, if it's a ping, and the VNet system goes to the CP and do it behalf of him and then show the results. 
The third thing is configuration. In this point, each ch configuration change is called modified. It means that this change that you do now in the portal, it creates a modified action that will need to change the configuration in each. Let's take, for example, if I change my LAN interface in branch Tel Aviv, I change it from 10, 10, 10, 1 to 10, 10, 21. This is subnet change. It's not that it only goes to the CP and change the IP address. It goes to the whole network and it configure it as part of the access list in, to, to add routing all over the place. If you have object in the firewall rule, if you have object that has this IP address, so we change it, it and then it goes and change it all over the way. For the customer, it's the easiest part to do. So the question is, um, why we did it in an open uh, way. So when we started uh, thinking about doing it, uh, this product, we understood we have two alternatives. One is to take a from-the-shelf product that has its own uh, uh, limitation or to, to build what we want. We wanted to do something that in one hand will have the ability for us to integrate it into partner's current services. Let's say a partner has an MPLS network. We don't want to kill it yet. We know as the one, we'll do it. You talked about it earlier. So we, we, we wanted to do something that will integrate between the SD1 solution and our VRF solution. We know that if we do it with the closed solution, we won't be able to do that. So what we did, we went for an open solution in order, and then we built the blocks of the, the solution. We put which element we want, which device we want in the flow, and then we built our own solution based on our use case. And I think this helped us to build uh, the, con all, the whole network based on what we want to do. The third thing is the BSS integration. BSS integration, I think, is the one of the most uh, difficult things to do because you have logic that you've built for many years to support your BSS current uh, network. So this was one, this was one of, the, of the key chain, key that we, we decided to go in open because we want to customize it to partner logic, to BSS logic. Then we wanted multiple vendors. We talked about it earlier. We wanted Cisco, we wanted Fortin, we wanted Palo Alto, we want everybody to join the, the, the party. So we wanted to be able to integrate with each one. Doesn't matter which API it has, if it's NetConf, whatever, if it's REST, we want, we want to integrate each vendor that we would like to, to and, and just to tell you a story, that we just started uh, implementing another vendor uh, as a CP vendor, two vendors, so if we had taken a closed solution, it means that we need to maybe uh, have only one or two vendors. White labeling, of course, we want, as, as we showed earlier, we want to make it a customer's portal for our use case and customer's portal for uh, our customer. And the last thing I think is the most important for me as a technical guy, challenge. There's the project challenges, there were uh, business development challenges, and there were technical challenges. I will cover the challenges right now. Um, so first challenge was time. We started the project at the first in uh, January this year. We had to finish it in three months. We got three months more, but we done it in five months we needed to do a use case, to take the use case that we thought about at the beginning and try to, try to fit it to the solution, to the technical solution, and also to the target market. So this, those three points should be correlated together because it, doesn't make, it, it won't work if you build a solution, nice solution, nice solution as, as it will be, if it's not fit to, uh, to, to the target market. So there's nothing you can do with that. The next solution is BSS integration. We talked about it. It's a big challenge. It was a big challenge, resource allocation. This was something I know that every, every technical uh, network engineer knows how do I allocate the IP addresses, how do I allocate the interface ID, where do I put it, how do I make sure that this allocation of, this allocation of, of, of resources is available or not available, is it taken or not taken. This was one of uh, the biggest challenge we had. And I think initial deployment and modification I think it's part of the, it's the difficult, I think modification is the difficult part. It's the most difficult part of the project. 
Because modify, you need to know what's in now, and you need to change it. You need you have delete, and then you have add, or you just and and in this situation, you need to understand how to interact with the network device in order to do that. So in each network device, or so each VNF, or in each function, or PNF, you need to know how to handle it in order to do the modification. And PNF to VNF connectivity, of course, how do you how do you connect between the physical network function infrastructure and to the virtual network infrastructure? It was a big challenge. And I think the best challenge here is how do you take network engineer and do them as the end engineer, software defined network engineer? How do you then software and network engineers? So I think it was the best challenge here. And I think we got a lot of uh, benefits from this project because our network engineer really transformed into a software defined network engineers and we can see it on other products and even internal products external products that we today partner provide we can see that we are able to provide network services with the software envelope okay so what next so partner of course will add additional function for more services so we're going to add function we're going to service chain them and in order to provide the whole of uh, the whole bracket of uh, services. Of course, there are many more uh, services that uh, uh, today sell in different platforms. Let's say Wi-Fi controller, we want to integrate it into the VNet. But I think the most important, what next step will be, is we're going to ask, we are asking our customer what they want. And I think because we had an open solution, we can answer with yes to what they want. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.